In this video, I want to talk about the idea of a coefficient of determination, which tells you in some sense how good the regression is in terms of prediction power. So let me give you an example here with two variables that are unrelated. So your foot length in, in inches and the distance you travel to university in mm -hmm. kilometers. And as you can see from the graph here, there doesn't seem to be any particular relationship. In fact, I think you'd be pretty happy saying there's no relationship between foot length and the distance it is to the university from your house. So if you do want to protect the um, distance to uh, a student to university, you're thinking, well, their shoe size doesn't matter. So maybe the best thing we can do is we can just take the average distance from the ones that we have. So in that case, we would just draw a straight horizontal line. So just eyeballing this, but you could work it out. The average distance to university looks like around 15 kilometers. And that's without using foot length at all. Just thinking of these as various different distances to the university, well, the average would be 15. So, if we did do a least squares regression line, well, maybe it wouldn't look particularly different to the regression, to the straight line that we just drew. I'll do this in yellow. So maybe our regression line would look something like that. That's our least squares regression line. And if you look at the difference in the errors to the actual points, I'll do them in dotted lines here. For example, there's this one. Let's make that a little more dotted, in fact. And maybe I'll do just one more, this one. And then you look at the error from the regression line. For every point, it's about the same, because this is roughly a straight line. So, if we think about the difference, remember, the yellow quantity is our sum of squared errors. We're going to square these just to get rid of the, uh, the direction of them. Remember, that is the sum of each actual value minus the predicted value. If we take the ratio of that with, and I'll call it here S Y Y, just to be, just to be consistent with notation in the previous video, S X X. So this is the same thing as the difference from each point to the mean. And these should all be squared. I'm forgetting a square here and here. But just looking at this, each squared distance is going to be about the same. So the top is going to be about the same as the bottom. So this is going to be about 1, since the quantity on the top is almost the same as the quantity at the bottom. So in some sense, if we get a number like 1 here, this is saying this is a regression that doesn't explain much. That x value that we would plug into the regression isn't doing very much compared to just using the average value and not caring about your x value at all. Let's look at the opposite scenario on the next slide. So let's say instead we were comparing foot size with the length of your thumb. And I'm not going to bother putting actual units in here, but you could see that this relationship looks a lot more linear. It looks like a straight line. 
So I'm going to draw my regression line again in yellow. So there's my regression line. That's y hat equals b1x plus b0. And we can do the same thing. We can ask, well, if we didn't care about the x values, the best we could do is kind of the average y value for everything. So we'll just draw a horizontal line at the average y bar. And now we can look at our errors. Let's look at the error from each point to uh, each of the lines. We'll do a few of these, but it's going to be the same for all of them. We'll start with the, um, the mean line. So let's say to this point here, there's our error. It's a quite large error. Same with, let's do this point here. That's quite large of an error as well. And maybe let's do one more. Let's do this point. But if we look at the errors from the regression line to each point, they're a lot smaller. If we look here with the, the same points, I'll do them in yellow, you can see that the errors between each point and the regression line are, at least on average, a lot smaller than each point to the mean horizontal line. So when you have a situation like this, where your regression line looks really close to the data points, well, what's going on? Same thing. We know that our SSE, remember that's the distance between each point and the predicted point in your regression line. I'll write that down again. That's the sum of yi minus y hat i squared. And we're going to divide that. We're going to, again, look at the ratio of s y y. So that is the sum of the difference between each point and the mean squared. That's all of these distances, the distance between each point and the mean squared. And this guy is the distance between each point and our regression line squared, of course. But now you can see, you can imagine that all of these dotted yellow lines, the errors here between our regression and the actual points, are a lot smaller than the average between each point and this mean line. So here we're going to get something not quite zero, but we'll say approximately equal to zero, or at least small. And it's in situations like this, where we have the ratio between our SSE, the sum of our squared errors, and this SYY. When that is small, we like that. That means our regression is working. So with these two examples in mind, let's go on and let's talk about this coefficient of determination. So more formally, we have this coefficient of determination. It's usually called R squared with a capital R, although you might see in some books little r squared. And the reason that we write R squared is to remind ourselves that it has to do with squared distances and the formula for it is very similar to what we just talked about, but because they want to measure the proportion of sample variability explained by the linear relationship between y and x, we want the higher number to mean lots explained by the regression line. We want 1 to be everything's explained and 0 to be nothing's explained. So we just take that quantity that we calculated in the previous slides and we subtract it from one. So it's one minus that proportion that we worked out on the previous slides, or at least kind of worked out in some sort of general sense. So let's do a little example. In fact, let's do the data that we looked at in the previous video. Okay. If you remember from our previous video, we were looking at the average number of hours per week that somebody exercised versus their resting heart rate. And from that, we calculated the following regression equation, negative 4.8077x plus 
0.0193. And just as a reminder, because we'll need it, the average y value we can calculate as 75. So in order to find our coefficient of determination, we just need to calculate our sum of squared errors, which will be the total of this column, and that SYY, which will be the total of that column. Here's our errors. We're squaring them, and if we add them together, we get the sum of squared errors. And this is our S. Y, Y. So these are the two column values we'll need to calculate our R squared. So let's go ahead and do this. There's a little bit of work, but we need to be able to find the predicted value when we plug in each of these X values. I'll do just one row here, just so you can see how it's done. Then I'll pause the video, fill in everything. You can check my work to make sure that you understand where everything is coming from. But let's figure out our predicted value here. So we just need to plug in our x value into the regression. So let's just do that over to the side here. So we want the predicted value for x1, which we'll call y1, is going to be negative 4.8077 times 0 0.5 plus 87.8. 0.0193. So that's just plugging in 0 0.5 into our regression equation. And if we calculate that, we indeed get to two decimal places, we get 84.62. Okay. Now let's figure out the error here. So we're going to subtract y i minus our predicted y i and if we do that we get 85 minus 84.62 gives us 0 0.38 and now let's square that 0 0.38 squared to two decimal places is 0 0.15 that's great and now let's start calculating SYY, so we'll need the distance between each point and the mean, and then we square it. And we've done this, in fact, at least a bit of it in the previous video. So here we're going to get 10, and if we square 10, we get 100. So that is how you calculate each uh element in our row here. So now pause the video, see if you can fill in the rest of the table. Once you do, add up all of your values here, all of your error squares. In fact, you could even call this bit here our error, and this bit here our error squared. So fill in the rest of the table, add up your error squared columns to get SSE, and then add up your column here to get SYY. So pause the video now and try that yourself. And there is a completed table. And the two important numbers, of course, are SSE. So that is the sum of the squared errors of our regression line. And that SYY, that is the sum of the squared distance from each point to the mean of Y. Also, as a note, you might also see SYY called SST, sum of squares total. Okay, now that we have those values, we can calculate our R squared. We'll calculate it in blue here over to the side. We have R squared is 1 minus SSE 99.52 over SYY, which is 400. And you can check that indeed we do get 0 0.7512. So 
roughly 75% of the variability in our graph is explained by the linear relationship between, at least for the uh, six points that we had, between average um, number of hours exercised for a week and resting heart rate. Note that when you're doing regressions, usually you're going to use a lot more points than six, but by hand it's kind of in, unfeasible. So we'll see some examples later. Um, where we can use some computers to calculate these and things go a lot better, but at least we can interpret what um, all of these things are like r squared. So that is how to calculate our coefficient of determination.